Uh, as Terry said, my name is Jason Becker. Uh, I am an MSLOC graduate. I just finished up the program this last December of 2011, uh, and I'm also the co-founder of Remember.com. Um, I'm thrilled to death to have MSLOC's support with my entrepreneurial uh, venture, not intrapreneurial venture. Uh, Remember.com has been live for just over uh, a month or so, and MSLOC jumped right on the bandwagon and supported us right out of the gate. So I'm very grateful for that, uh, and especially grateful to Keeley for uh, all the harassing that she has done for all of you. If you've not yet joined Remember, I'll find you afterwards, and we'll have a sincere chat. Um, Remember.com is an open memory bank. It's a place where anyone can come and add the memories of anything they care about. The site is structured very similar to like a Wikipedia, where anyone can add memories of any person, place, or topic. But my remarks tonight are not going to be about the product itself or the company. What I'd instead like to focus on is how we got to where we are today and talk a little bit about that process with you. Um, the central point and idea that I'd like to share with you is the concept that you can devolve towards the future and that sometimes evolving is not the right answer. In fact, you ought to be devolving. So I want to share that devolutionary journey with you that I've been on over the last 18 months. So in order to do that, I got to take us back to September 21st, 2011. Uh, it was last uh, summer-ish, fall-ish. We had a working alpha product. We were live. People could come to remember.com and do stuff. The only challenge was people weren't coming to remember.com and doing stuff. Uh, and the reason was because we had built a product that was designed for you as an individual to have a space where you could add memories. Now, we didn't realize we had a problem. Everything felt good. I think the sun was shining on September 21st. On September 22nd, 2011, coincidentally, it was Remember's one-year anniversary. And that morning, uh, one of my favorite CEOs in the world, uh, who is the head of a, the world's most valuable media company, uh, told the entire world that he was going to be the one that provided the world a timeline. Now, that came as a big surprise when Facebook showed up and basically said, nice try, guys. We're going to be the ones that do the timeline. So that was like a gorilla kind of walked into the room of our company. We've been working very hard on uh, building this timeline-based product for individuals for well over 18 months. And there comes the choice. And the choice was, do we continue on the path we are? Do we try to keep climbing up this mountain that we're on? Or do we come off this mountain? And do we devolve our product towards a new direction? Or do we quit? And all three of those choices were very real. And September 22nd was one of the longest days of my life. Uh, and on September 23rd, we began our journey towards devolution, which is basically the creative destruction of something you've done in favor of a new path or a new direction. I'm getting a tweet. Stop tweeting. You're, you're messing with my notes. Uh, <laughs> I look down, I'm staring at a tweet, not my notes. It's a panic. So the next two months, we basically went on a journey which is referred to by some authors as the Valley of Despair. Uh, Seth Godin calls that journey the dip. Uh, and from a first-person experience, I can assure you it is nasty down there. Uh, because what you're basically doing is you're trying to keep your team intact as you take apart your product and as you try to reimagine what's possible for the future. And you're trying to keep your team moving towards a desired outcome. So that valley of despair went on for about two months. And in about December of last year, we took on two more resources and we started evolving in the direction we are now uh, live with and what you can see on remember.com. In March of 2011, we launched to DePaul University, which is also one of my alma maters. In April of 2000, or sorry, 2012, in April, we launched to Northwestern. And just several weeks after, we're featured in the USA Today. So, my journey has been devolutionary. As I was chatting with Kelly before this talk, it seems like I've been at this for two years, and it seems that way because I have. Now, the product that you see on remember.com is only five months old. And so the point I would like to make with you is that sometimes you cannot evolve your product further. You have to, in fact, devolve and start over. And that was a really hard lesson to learn, but I'll leave you with four key points. The first point is if you find yourself stuck, 
just get off the mountain. Do whatever it takes to get unstuck and do it as fast as you can possibly do it. The second point, as you transition from one mountain to another, be okay with external doubt. People won't understand why you're making the changes you're making. That's okay, because you know more about your situation than they do. Be confident and make that transition as swiftly as you can. The third point, be prepared for that dip. It's going to happen, because you can't go from the peak of one mountain to the peak of another. It's impossible. You have to climb down off one and climb up another. You can't just jump from peak to peak. And the fourth, the fourth point, and final point I'll leave you with, this is my favorite, is that don't mistake a clear vision for a short distance. That's one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn through this entire process because as we began to devolve and re-evolve, I knew exactly what I wanted Remember.com to look like and feel like and be like. But that did not mean it was going to be easy. In fact, it was harder than I could ever <laughs> express and harder than I could have ever imagined as we got started. So if you're willing to devolve, and if you're willing to make it through that dip and through that valley of despair, I can assure you that you will be able to evolve in any direction you want in the future. Thank you.